Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. And today I want to show you guys how to get your Amiga emulator up and running on the Raspberry Pi running Retro Pi. Now I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 and I'm on Retro Pi 3.7. There are a few things you're going to need. We're going to open up my Amiga folder here. Now this is where I store my ROMs and my BIOS. So here are my ROMs. They end in ADF and they need to be named correctly. Most of them that you get will have odd characters in them. You need to just go ahead and rename them. You can't have any underscores or the file will not load. Just rename it to something simple with no underscores. Spaces are fine, but no odd characters inside. No and signs and stuff like that. I've had problems before, so just name them easy names here. Another world disk one dot ADF. Super simple here. The next most important thing that you will need are your kick ROMs. Now the this kick ROMs are like a BIOS for the Amiga. Now there are several kick ROMs that you can get. I definitely recommend getting all of them. There is 1.2, 1.3, 2.0, 3.0, 3.1 and 4.0. When you get these, you need to rename them exactly like this. Kick12.rom. Kick13.rom. Kick20.rom. When you get them, they may be named Kickrom 1.2. You need to rename them just like this. This is very important. The Amiga UAE for all will not read them unless they are named just like this. So if you have your kick ROM 3.1, name it kick 31.rom. Easy as that. So I'm going to transfer my ROMs to my Raspberry Pi over network. I'm going to open up a file explorer window. And down here, my RetroPie is already showing here. If you do not see your RetroPie or your Raspberry Pi in your network, go up to the top here and type in backslash, 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 all capital, RetroPie, and press enter. as you see, I'm having trouble getting into my RetroPie here. Backslash. 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 Retro. Pie. There we are. Sometimes you'll have trouble getting that. So it is backslash backslash all capital retro pi press enter you should be brought to a screen like this with your bios configs roms and splash screens now if the backslash backslash retro pi does not work you can always type in your ip address you can locate your ip address in your retro pi settings under ip I will show you how to do that when we go to the retro pie, but it'll just be backslash, 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 192.168.192-168-10-108. Yours will be different from mine, so remember that. But I'm going to do my retro pie, all capital. Now I am inside of the Raspberry Pi now. I'm going to open up my BIOS folder. Then I'm going to open up my Amiga folder. And for the kick ROMs, I'm just going to copy kick 12, kick 13, kick 20, kick 30, kick 31, and kick 40 dot ROM. Just drop them right in here. Now they are loaded onto your Raspberry Pi SD card and the Amiga emulator will be able to see them now. 
We're going to back up one on each of these screens. We're going to go to ROMs. I'm going to open up my Amiga folder. Leave these two files alone. They need to be here in order for UAE for all to work. I'm just going to copy all of my ADFs. These are my Amiga ROMs. I'm going to paste them over here. Drag them in there and you are good to go. So inside of your BIOS folder, you should have your kick 12, 13, 20, 30, 31, 40. You can just use a single kick if you'd like, but some games will not run without the proper kick. So I do suggest getting all of the kick ROMs and you can find them online easily. Just Google Amiga kick ROMs. And inside of your ROMs, we're going to go to Amiga. Make sure you have your games inside of here. They need to be ADF files and they need to be named properly. You can name them anything you'd like as long as you do not have any weird characters inside of the name. We are done here, so we're going to go to the Raspberry Pi. From there, I will show you how to set up, configure, and run awesome old school Amiga games on your Raspberry Pi. We are now back at the Raspberry Pi. I want to show you guys how to find your IP address in case you weren't able to access your Raspberry Pi over network using the backslash backslash retro pie. We'll go into our retro pie here and we'll just go down to show IP. Now our IP address is listed at the top there of the middle square. Your IP is 192-168-10-108. Your IP will be different and it will change sometimes. So you need to make sure that you have the correct IP. Every once in a while, I'm not exactly sure how this works, but every few times I reboot, I get a new IP address. So you may have a new IP address also after you reboot. But write that down, take a picture, take note. We're going to exit out. Use your keyboard to exit. So we are going into the Amiga emulator now. You will need a mouse and keyboard to navigate the Amiga menu. Press X on my controller. I am using a wireless PS3 controller. We're going to start the first one, which is Start UAE for All. So when you come to this screen, a lot of people might be overwhelmed by what's going on here, guys. Oh my God, what is this? This is actually very simple. If you think about it the correct way, it is very, very simple. Here, the DFO, this is where we insert our ROMs. So if you have a four-part game, you need to insert all four discs. And I am going to do that now. We'll just click on the DFO. I'm going to load another world. Now this is a two disc game here. I'm going to load my next disc in DF1. I usually set my floppy speed to eight. Hard drive menu. We don't need to do anything here. We'll go to our CPU and RAM. Now this is your CPU and RAM menu here. Some games run better on the 6800 CPU. Some games run better on the 6820. In order to change this and get it correct, I use the presets down here. So if you have an A500 game, we'll just click on A500 and you see it changed all these settings for me. I know that Another World runs really good on the A1200 preset, so we're going to click A1200. What that does is it sets the CPU to the 6820 version, chipset, AGA, our kickstart, which is the kick ROMs that we loaded. It sets it to my kick ROM 3.1, and remember we named them correctly with no spaces and no dashes or dots, so we have kick ROM or we have kick31.rom. 
This is our kickstart ROM. CPU speed, 14 megahertz. Memory, 2 megabytes. All that good stuff. Display and sound. You really don't have to set up anything here. If you have low frame rates, you can set the frame skip. I usually just leave this alone. I'm on the Raspberry Pi 3, so it runs pretty decently for me. Save states. If you save your game, you can load your save states from here. Control. You can set your controller. I Mine is on port 1. I'm using my PS3 controller here. Joystick, both ports, auto fire rate. You can set this however you'd like. Mouse speed, two times. Now this works inside of the games. So if you want a faster mouse speed, you can set it to four times. Then we have our custom control, which you can set up and map your controller the way you'd like to map it. And I'd leave mine stock. It usually works for me, no problem. From the initial setup of my controller, it maps the controls perfectly for me. So we're going to go back to our floppy drive. Now we have another world, disk 1, disk 2, floppy speed 8, A1200 preset. You can see that by the little black border here that we have that chose. And I'm going to save my config file. Now when we load another world, it will automatically know that we want to run it at the same settings that we set in our CPU, RAM, controller, and all of those. So it will save all your settings there. You don't have to go through and do this every time. And in order to start the game, you just want to click on reset right here. So I am on the PS3 controller and this screen here. I'm this happens on the Another World ROM. I'm not sure what this is really, but I have to use my right thumbstick and click on it to click the OK buttons. You are now running these awesome old school Amiga games on your Raspberry Pi. It is very, very simple. There is really not a lot to it. The games just get up and run. And I'm on the Raspberry Pi 3, and I've had really, really good performance with the Amiga emulator. Now, if you would like to exit this, we can't just press Start and select on the controller. We need to use our keyboard and press Control, Exit. We're going to load up another ROM here. We'll try Toki. We'll remove this disk by hitting eject. So Toki is a one disk game. I'm going to click on my, we'll do A500, see if it works. Save config, OK. We'll hit reset. So A500 does work with the Toki game. Actually, if you look down at the bottom, we do have some crazy lines going on in the pixels there. Now I have not been able to get this game to run perfectly smooth. Ah. That's it guys. That's how you run Amiga on the Retro Pi. I'm going to press control escape.
We're back here at the Amiga UAE for All menu. And like I said, guys, that is it. That is how you run the Amiga emulator on your Raspberry Pi, running RetroPie. It's really simple. You just need to name your kick ROMs correctly and make sure your games are named correctly. Now, you could actually name this anything you want as long as there's no spaces or weird characters inside of here. I'm going to hit quit. Bring us back to the RetroPie emulation station front end. And that's it, guys. That's how you run Amiga on the Raspberry Pi. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, if you got any requests, let me know in the comments below or send me a private message. If you could, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I got a lot more tutorials coming on RetroPie gaming, Android gaming, any emulation in general. I'll do it. If you got any requests, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.